Hello and welcome to another Thought of the Day. My name is Paul Aldridge. I'm one of the leaders of the Estuary Group of Churches here in Essex. In my previous Thought of the Day, we looked at Acts 2, how God poured out his Holy Spirit on those people who were worshipping God on the day of Pentecost. But if you remember just before that, this is what Jesus said to his disciples. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. And that is Acts 1, 4 and 5 from the NIV. I want to continue our theme of significant seasons today, this time in the life of of one of the disciples, Peter. Peter was the one who, one of the believers in the upper room when, the, when God poured out his Holy Spirit. He was the one who stood up filled with boldness and excitement and explained to the crowd in the street what had just happened to them as they were worshipping God. Let's see what Peter said to the crowd of people in the street. We find this in Acts 2, 14 to 22. Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judah and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men, men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in these days. And they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapour of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is a prime example of the power of the Holy Spirit. Peter was full of boldness and totally reliant on God as he explained to the crowd what had just happened. I don't know about you, I've found over the years it's a wise move to hand everything over to God at all times and trust in him. In my experience, he never lets us down. There's a story I heard many years ago now about a young teenage boy and his dad in the early 19th century. They went out for a ride on their horse and buggy on a beautiful summer's day. And this is what happened. They worked on a farm. Dad went and got the buggy out of the uh, stables and rigged it all up. And the son come out, helped him finish off rigging it all up. And they got, climbed aboard the buggy and trotted off down the country lanes because there was no hard concrete roads in those days uh, in the country. As they were just riding along, enjoying, enjoying the, the wonderful scenery, the fields, the trees, the birds and everything wonderful that's in the country. And it was also, like I said, a wonderful sunny day, sun beaming down on them. The young lad turned to his dad after a few miles and said, Dad, can I take over? Hand me the reins. And Dad just totally ignored him. They kept going. And after a little while, again, the lad said to him, Dad, can I take over? Hand me the reins. I want to take control. So Dad ignored him once again. Another few miles down these country lanes as they were clip-clopping along, the son for the third time says to him, Dad, hand me the reins. I want to take over. Let me have a go. 
So dad said, okay, but take it easy. Don't go too fast. Don't get out of control. Anyway, he handed over the reins to the young lad and away they went. But young men being young men, he wanted to go that little bit faster. So he just whipped on the, the reins and on the horse's back and the horse started to get to a gallop. And it makes me want to do this. <laughs> the horse was galloping along and everything was okay. But then it started to rain. The clouds come over, the rain poured down, the wind picked up, the trees were swaying, the bushes were swaying, the, the, the ruts and holes in this unmade road started to fill with water as the wheels went through the ruts and the holes in the road. Um, the water was splashing everywhere and the horse was getting faster and faster. The boy was getting totally out of control. And he said to his dad, Dad, take the reins, take control. And his dad ignored him, thinking to himself, you wanted to take over, you wanted to take control, get on with it. They carried on going and he was getting more and more out of control. The water was splashing everywhere, the trees were waving and oh, it, was, it, was a, 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 it turned into a horrible day. And the boy was totally out of control. Getting really worried, he turned to his dad once again and said, Dad, please take control. So father took control. He took the reins off of him and slowed the horse down and the rain started to stop. And as the rain stopped, everything seemed calmer. The horse and buggy was brought to a, a normal, to normal speed. And father looked to him and said, you wanted to take control and you asked me to take the reins once again. Which says to me that when father takes control of things, things are much better. I thought this story was a very good illustration of how it's always wise to give God the reins of our life. After all, after all he knows best for us, doesn't he? In John 15, 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Wise words. And in Psalm 121, 1 and 2, from the message, it says, I look up to the mountains. Does my strength come from the mountains? No, my strength comes from God, who made heaven and earth and the mountains. So what do these two verses say to us today? They say what they've always said. We just don't always get it. It's simple. Trust in God. He knows best for you. And keep your eyes firmly fixed on him and you won't go far wrong. Always remember what Jesus said, that he is the vine and we are the branches. If we stay joined to him, we will, we will produce much fruit. So remember, don't look to the mountains in your life. Look to God. He made the heavens and the earth and the mountains. Well, thanks for listening. God bless. Bye for now.